want to enjoy the uh, event. Um, so on that note, I think we'll go ahead and uh, prayer. So I would like to invite any volunteer in the house to uh, please take us on that. All right, then. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father Lord, we want to thank you for today. We want to thank you for yet another time, another birth here. Give you all the glory. Give you all the adoration in Jesus' name. Father, we want to once again commit this event into your hands. We pray that you come and guide us. Come and help us. Come and teach us yourself. All right, then. Pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Father Lord, we want to thank you for Amen. today. We want to thank you for yet another time, another birth Amen. here. Give you all the glory. Give you all the adoration in Jesus' name. Father, we want to once again commit this event into your hands. We pray that you come and guide us. Out. Come and help us. Come and teach us yourself. All right, then. All right, so please go ahead. ahead All right, we pray that you come and help us teach us yourself. I will commit the teachers into your hands, so God, Father, give them the strength, the grace, so God, and the enlightenment to be able to teach us perfectly. And at the end of the day, we'll be equipped with the knowledge of God to be able to train others in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. It. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Emmanuel, for that beautiful prayer. Uh, so we'll just quickly go into our safety brief. Of course, safety is important, and at all times we should observe safety rules and regulation. So for this meeting, I would like to plead that in whatever environment you might be, please observe all safety protocols um, for whatever environment you might be currently located while listening to this meeting. Um, if you are driving, kindly switch on your driving mode or your smart so you can uh, selectively listen here to the meeting. Uh, also, to observe etiquettes, uh, uh, kindly mute your mic when you are not speaking or shouting in the background uh, to avoid distractions. Uh, and this does actually allow to have that um, the video zone. Uh, if need be, uh, you can also use the headset. Uh, if possible, so you can listen. And please, uh, if you have any questions, kind of indicate by your hand. And I like any job questions or comments. Uh, of course, I did attend the questions. Um, Right to go ahead to the book of today's event. She's no one that's in my life. Gerald, I don't know if you can hear me. I'm struggling to hear. Is it just me? Oh, can you hear me? Okay. Hello, uh, can you hear me? I think it's better now. Just try to speak again. Continue now. Okay, so I was introducing uh, Ella. Okay, please go ahead. We couldn't hear, hear you me? before. Oh, I'm, I'm sincerely sorry. I'm sincerely sorry. I hope right. you can hear me clearly now. Yes, it's better. All right, thank you very much. So I, I, I was introducing the moderator for today's event. Um, she's no other person than Emanuela Abu, the um, current um, YP coach here. So I'll just quickly read through her profile. Manuela Abu is a graduate of mechanical engineering from the University of Port Harcourt. Uh, she has substantial technical knowledge and industry experience in industrial piping engineering, having done extensive coursework in metallurgy and corrosion, and worked with manufacturing companies such as Potisevi and Solo in Nigeria. In addition to an excellent academic track record, she, she's enthusiastic about trending technological skills, especially data science and machine learning. She is proficient in programming languages like Python, Excel, VB, and SQL. She is also skilled in the use of analytics, software such as Authorix and Tableau. 
Um, she has good professional training and experience in modern business and digital marketing. And she currently works as a project engineer at Renovo Limited. Um, Imanala has so strong proven leadership abilities, having led several teams okay. at different levels, okay. lending credence to you. Uh, kindly mute your mic, please. Uh, just observe meeting etiquette. Thank you. So she's also repeated for timeliness and agility in executing projects and meeting the deliverables. And she advocates for women in STEM and has volunteered for many causes that encourage women's participation, leadership, politics, and STEM. Uh, she recently won the Pervetri Award for Most Enterprising Business and is currently the YP co chair for the Society of Petroleum Engineers Section 1. On that note, I would like to welcome Emanuela Abu to speak and guide us through the remaining part of the session. Thank you very much, Emanuela. Over to you. Thank you, Gerald. Thank you, everyone. You're welcome to today's meeting. I hope we had a wonderful day today. So without um, further ado, I'm just going to introduce our speakers. I want to just tell you guys that we have a wonderful lineup of speakers that will be sharing their experience and knowledge of ALP. So sit tight, relax, and enjoy the meeting. Okay, I'll start with um, Iwari Christopher. She's a graduate of the Petridum. She's a graduate of Petroleum Engineering from the River State University of Science and Technology and is completing a master's in Petroleum Production Engineering from the University of Port Harcourt. She started her journey in the oil and gas industry as an operations intern with Topline Limited and later as a planning engineer before joining Hales Holding, where she currently works. I'm just going to add this. Recently, Iwari won an award and congratulations to you, Iwari. She joined SP as a student member and transitioned to a young professional member in Port Harcourt section and has been volunteering in different capacities as an ALP lecturer, membership committee member, social affairs committee, and is presently the assistant student affairs chair and team lead for the ALP committee. What drives Iwari is her desire to challenge herself, her quest to know more, make impact, and cause change. You're welcome, Iwari. Then our second speaker for today is Mrs. Docas Otiskura. Docas is a Christian who is enthusiastic and committed to adding value to the world at large through small units, taking one step at a time while aspiring for peak heights in her career. A graduate of petroleum engineering who, possessed, who possesses a distinction in Masters of Technology in Petroleum Engineering from the River State University and is currently pursuing her PhD in petroleum engineering on alternate clean and sustainable energy. She started off her professional career as a personal slash lecturing assistant, graduate assistant to Professor E.N. Wami. Her zeal for knowledge, research, and problem-solving skills promoted her to being his research assistant as her undergraduate project design of a floating roof good oil storage tank of 100,000 P. BPD capacity attracted third fund research grants and a project established in Taraba State University. She's passionate about volunteerism, skilled in project management, basic Python, machine learning, artificial intelligence, coding and programming, Microsoft Word, Excel, HiSys, Petran, humble leadership, eloquence, professional communications, which further promoted her while still holding her other positions to being a project management assistant to Professor E. N. Wami for the establishment of the world class PSETA University. She's a drilling fluid specialist with over seven years academic and less, and less years field experience and has been involved in several energy related projects, researches, and have and has over 800 publications, both in international, local, and professional journals. She is a second runner up of the SP Potter called YP Medium Entrepreneurship slash Business Idea Contest. And as a result, Bretted Fort Dead Jui, Nigeria Limited, a startup company involved in researches, especially waste to wealth or energy, of which she is a CEO. She's one of the top five qualified applicants of the Median um, SP Potter Court YP Scholarship Program. And coupled with other 
with her passion for entrepreneurship, spurred her into bagging a mini MBA with Acadia Institute. She's currently the communications chair and active YP of SPE Section 103 Protocol Section, who loves to network volunteer. Her present vision is to attain the highest height in her career, both in the energy industry and academic world, where there are tough dynamic challenges with it seems she's a good player. Impacting insightful and moral values to the world around her and being a role model and a source of, and a source of inspiration to every human, mostly the girl child within the energy career path. You're welcome, Mrs. Docas. Good to have you. Finally, I'll be introducing our keynote speaker in the person of Dr. Ike Chuku Okafor. He was, he started out as an engineer. So say for the engineer um, prefix before his name. So he's a seasoned petroleum engineer with progressive experience that cuts across reservoir and well engineering, research and development. He obtained his bachelor's, master's and doctorate degrees from the De Department of Petroleum Engineering, Petroleum and Gas Engineering University of Port Harcourt. He's a World Bank scholar and a beneficiary of the Petroleum Technology Development fund research grants for his PhD study at the World Bank Africa Center of Excellence in Oil Field Chemicals Research, University of Port Harcourt. As a motivated, proactive and result-oriented professional, he's committed to knowledge acquisition and transfer through learning and teaching, research and development in the areas of reservoir engineering, chemical wellborne instability, petrophysics, oil food chemicals, renewable energy, and sustainable development, and in the mitigation of climatic change through the reduction of anthropogenic, excuse me, please, anthropogenic carbon using innovative carbon capture and sequestration technologies. A registered engineer with Koren, member of the Nigerian Society of Engineers, is also an associate environmental professional professional of the National Registry of Environmental Professionals, a professional member of the Society of Petroleum Engineers. He's skilled in collaborating with team members to achieve targeted objectives and has made significant contributions to knowledge through papers published in high impact journals and presentations at conferences. He's a lecturer in the Department of Petroleum and Gas Engineering, now University of, Ni of Nigeria, Abuja, and the membership chairman, SPE Abuja section. You're welcome, Dr. Ikechuku. So Dr. Ikechuku is going to be our keynote speaker for today. So please, with a warm welcome, I want everyone to put, to, um, put in the clapping emoji in the chat box. Let us make welcome Dr. Ikechuku. He's going to be telling us about tips and guiding us through the delivery of a successful ALP. Over to you, Dr. Ikechuku. Oh. Thank you so much. Uh, that's uh, Emanuela, right? Uh, yes, sir. Is it Emanuela from our own special mandate engineering? <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm from mechanical departments in Uniport. Okay, I still know that Emanuela, yes, I know. Oh, okay. I know you. Okay, good evening, everybody. Yeah. Can everybody hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, it's always nice to be to be here. It's always nice to have um, SP Potakot. I mean, that's home, right? And uh, every time I have the opportunity to either um, speak with um, young professionals or meet the students, it's always um, an amazing experience for me. Uh, can I be allowed to share my slides, please? Okay, can we see my slide? Yes, we can see your slide. Okay, so I, I, I'm just going to talk about delivering effective ALPs. Um, basically, your ALP is um, your ambassador laptop program. Funny enough, why this is passionate for me, the ALP was my first thing when I decided to be very active with them, um, the 
SP protocol protection and offered me the opportunity to, to volunteer, offered me the opportunity to meet um, students aside from the University of Protocol student that I was um, to at the time. And the experience of the ALP has served me even up to this day. And so, my name is Ike Chukusan Liokapo, um, a lecturer in the Department of Social Management Engineering. I'm the membership chair for SP Abuja section and the incoming program chair for the new board meeting. Now, when you look at what I have here about the, le um, the ambassador lecture program, how and why you want to be part of that, why preparation is important, and how best you can deliver your lecture. The basic benefit of your ALP is to educate, inform, and to develop the skills of the next generation of oil and gas professionals. So at the back of your mind, every time you have to deliver an ALP, ask yourself, what am I doing there to do? And this will form the bulk of the answer. To educate students, to help them get better informed, and to develop even their latent skills. Now, what does YP, what do we do? Of course, at the time um, in 2017, when um, I did work of my ALP across um, the schools in Section um, 103, we visited um, universities, we visited secondary schools, and all of this was to help disseminate information about the EMP industry. My experience um, put across different schools in the um, in the biggest section, biggest SP section in Africa, which is the amazing Potaco section, I mean, always part of Potaco section. Yes, I'm in Africa section, but Potaco section will always remain home anytime, any day. So, in between 2017 and 2018, I delivered um, ALP in 10 of the 13 um, student chapters at that time of section 102. And basically, my job then was to speak about our industry, what are the um, pertinent challenges, and how can SPE help the students? Because the typical student is a curious person. Why they are in school, they are projecting. They are projecting about what is the best career path for them. They are projecting about what are the typical challenges that their predecessors have faced that they should find a way through without facing them, because if you are standing on the shoulders of the predecessors, this is clearer and further than before. The students will always ask, what are the opportunities for students within the SPD? And they will always seek career advice. So these are basically what um, I was thinking about when I had the opportunity to visit the most of these schools. This was in Futo in 2018. I'm sure um, you can remember some of you here. Um, this was the SP president at the time. This was also the incoming president. And this was Timo Poli in 2018. Uh, we were also in COOU in May 2017. And this was you. If you look clearly in this picture, you will see Yuwami, she was there, she was a copper at the time, and I remember her telling us she was going to wait for us to meet her up and join us for the for the ALP in Dinui. I mean, look at how much time between then and now, and we are still doing the best of what we can do. This was ND, ND, NDU um, in um, the Bayelsa in May 2017, and also in um, June. Now, basically, all through those times, the message was the same. Different ways to send it, but it was basically the same, helping to answer this question if students have. And so, for the new people who want to become um, 
the ALP box, but it is simple. At every time, you will be asked, asked questions and you are expected to give answers to the best of your knowledge. Can we still hear me? Am I still audible? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear you, sir. Okay. I don't want to talk about what I do. I want to focus on um, how best to, to take um, the, the help because this is what I do. I lecture, I do research, and I leverage on my knowledge um, to network and my, my, my hunger for um, innovation to achieve test goals and provide solutions. That's basically what I do. I, I, I have this legacy, I have this belief that whatever you do, your idea, your, your driving force should be about the best and the better way to do it. So continually improving on what you've done before, continually looking for a better way to do that thing, and continually looking for a way to impact people around you. So for those um, coming up to take up the, the um, charge of ALP, you want to ask yourself, what are you doing right now? What are you doing at this moment? Do you have a future in the industry? Because if you don't believe you have a future in the industry, then the question will be, what are you doing here? But because there is a future for you, you have to make every time you have that opportunity to deliver an LP, you have to make it count. Before the end of this lecture, I will give a testimony of what um, my by sojourn with the LP, I'll give a question of what it is for me. And at any point, the time to begin to deliver that dream LP you have is now. Now, LP and the world need you to deliver energy to the world, find ways to produce and use um, uh, um, hydrocarbon more efficiently. We need you to make our world a better place. Now, let's take a quick dive into why we're here today. To deliver an ALP, one of the first things you need to do is to plan and prepare. On planning, the LP protocol section is an amazing section that you have the best of resources. Quote me anywhere. You have the best of resources, you have the best of net network, and you have the best of assistance in terms of living anything. So, in planning and in preparation, this is what we are doing right now. We are planning on how to deliver ALP for this body. There are a lot of people who have delivered ALP before. What do you do? You pick their brain. Oh, sir, you've gone to, to, to deliver ALP. What was your experience like? The person will tell you what limited them and what was their high point. Preparation cannot be overemphasized. That's what I'm trying to say. Second thing you need to bother about is delivering your ALP. Your slides must be as simple and as straight to the point as possible. I repeat, it must be as simple and as straight to the point as possible. Now, the students in this school, like I said, they are students. So you may want to choose a topic at any rate that people their fancy. But more importantly, a topic that informs and clears whatever doubts we have. So, all of that goes into your preparation. And in delivering your lecture, there is no, I mean, don't make it ambiguous. In the simplest of terms, both of these students are SE students. Some of them are just curious, wanting to know okay, what is SE all about. So, while you are delivering the lecture to clear doubts, you are also delivering the lecture to make these people want to belong to the SPD. And at the end of every lecture, please do not forget to get the feedback as much as you can. Now, typically, when you hear something for the first time, there's every chance you may forget it. When you see something, there's every chance you remember it. But when you do something, I can bet you, you will understand it. So, every time, you go out there to deliver a lecture, do well to get the feedback, and act on the feedback as much as you can. Share your experience with your um, superiors, 
and also get their feedback and then work on those feedback. Now, in my experience, why um, delivering ALP and in the feedback I've gotten, there are positive points and there are negative points. Why, when you want to set your lecture for your, your, your slides or whatever um, material you want to use, it is better to set a structure that is simple. When you deliver a good lecture, there is this satisfaction that comes when you deliver a good lecture to your audience and you feel like, oh, I killed it. But then again, what do you do when your, your audience is uninterested? What do you do when you have a short time to prepare for a lecture and then the audience is one that is diverse? All of these points are things you need to, at every rate, focus on and make your next um, opportunity to deliver an ALP better. I would advise everyone who intends to deliver an ALP to have this at the back of their mind. Progress is always better than perfection. Progress is always better than perfection. What that, what that means is what you did today, do well to add something on it, get better tomorrow. And if there is a continuous um, progress, you start at the end of the day, you won't even know when you became too perfect on what you are doing. Most of the feedback you may get may not be as beautiful as you want, but that is not a reason to stop doing what you know you want to do. So, assuming your, your, the, the ALP you are going to deliver is online, you may want to do well to solve the problem of in, being inaudible, being incoherent, and not emphasizing on key points. Um, work on your, your, your um, presentation skills, work on your preparation, be sufficiently enthusiastic about what you want to deliver. Now, try to encourage active participation of the students. And lastly, do well to provide quick and detailed feedback to the students. I mean, the students is is asking the question. It is fine if you don't have um, all the answers at the time, but do well to get that student, um, um, perhaps email address or phone number, and present a feedback. Now, what that does to that student, I can assure you, it makes that student feel important. And I can tell you, if you feel important about anything, you want to be there the next time. The most of us who are here, we are made to feel important when SD landed in our school. And today, we are here. I remember when, um, back then, we used to join the um, monthly um, technical lectures when it was when it held in, um, at Shell. Most times, we just find our way there. And the, the, the way our senior colleagues at the time encouraged us, there was no, there was no part of difference, they speak to you and tell you, oh, well done, they welcome you and all of that. They make you feel so important. And that is the only way you can keep the interest of these young ones up and running. As, as um, an ALP lecturer, what you are doing is just like wizardry, right? You try to make the student see SC for what it is. You try to make them want to join, want to have that interest to keep staying with SC. And even as a lecturer, even as um, the ALP lecturer, there are benefits for, uh, for you. You gain the experience of uh, presenting to diverse people, you gain the experience of presenting to large crowds, you gain leadership skills while you are volunteering, then for the students and for their school, you provide career guidance and support to the students. You also have, help them get up-to-date information about the, 
by an oil and gas industry, and you. Excuse me. Hello. Yeah, I just want to remind you of the time. How many do I have? Like three minutes. I'm going to go. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Now, like I've said before, in preparation is quite important. Failure to prepare is an open invitation to failure. It's as simple as that. The best of us prepare the worst of us take it for granted, but never fail to prepare. Why do I ask you this question? The material I have, is, this the mat is the material at the right level? Am I trying to cover too much? What difficulties am I going to anticipate? And is there any space for student involvement? And do I have a clear learning outcome? And what teaching aid am I going to need? All of this is what, at the end of the day, help you prepare well. Now, finally, why delivering your lecture? Two important times in the, in the um, cycle of a lecture is when you are opening and then when you are closing. At the opening, try to grab attention, and at the closing, emphasize your, your, your key points and show links to subsequent lectures and um, other materials you need them to cover. Finally, timing is everything. Don't want to deliver a lecture and overshoot on your time. And like I said before, you can't overemphasize feedback. You can get feedback through all of this and through survey. And you can't deliver a lecture without telling people about SPE. And here you see SPE will help you gain visibility, help you network help you mentor, help you learn. In 2017, I was still in Portacos, and there we had the SPE, um, SPSC in nine. And I attended SPSC in nine, and lo and behold, I had a conversation with um, the HOD of um, the Department of Technology and by February 2018, I was lecturing in nine. So that was SPE helping me get that Necessary visibility, and we are here today. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dr. Ekechuku, for that detailed session. Okay. Um, I'm sure we have questions for our speaker. I'm not seeing any question in the chat. So in case you have any question, maybe through the course of his speaking, kindly use the um, lifting hands feature on Zoom and you, we will select you to ask your question. Okay, um, I see Churchill's hand is raised. Okay, Churchill, kindly unmute and ask your question. Churchill, can you hear me? Oh, uh, it's Churchill's hand. Okay, if his hand is not ready to ask questions, Simeon, kindly unmute him. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Sorry, I was trying to unmute. Uh, okay, please. Can you hear me? Can you confirm if you can hear me? Yeah, Churchill, we can hear you. Okay. Thank you very much, Doctor Ike, for that. This uh, now is like. I did not want to miss this um, session, basically, because I think the first LP I attended was yours when it came to NGU. So, um, I don't know, I just have a question. Um, for the um, the slides, is it that is it compulsory for us to use the LP template provided by SPE for our LP presentations? Okay, um, talk to you. <laughs> Good to have you here again. It's been a while. Yes, yeah. it, because um, the message, while you may have the central message, while you may have the presentation you've made, but the central message at any rate is SPE. 
the technical method is behind whatever you are doing in SPC. So SP has um, provided that template. I mean, you could see I'm using the LP template. It, it's not like you can't use yours, but the cost at, at the center of all you are doing is SP. It is best to use um, the SP template. I hope you heard me um, right. Yes, he said he heard you, but I think it seems he can't unmute, but I also heard you too. Thanks, okay. Dr. Ike. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Ike Chiku. Does anyone have um, a question for him? All right. Okay, once again, thank you, Dr. Ike Chiku, for that wonderful um, presentation. You said... Please, can, we take, can we take Patrick? Sorry to interrupt you. Um, okay. Ella, sir, let's just take one more. We have the um, <laughs> we have Dr. Ike with us, so please let's maximize it <laughs> before you leave. Patrick, Simeon, please unmute Patrick. Yeah, hello, good evening, everybody. Good yeah, evening. so um, thank you um, for the presentation. So I have a very quick question. Um, is it proper for um, a presenter to digress when, um, let's say, a student is asking a question which is not um, relevant to um, or related to um, the topic? That, that, that's a very dicey question, but I like it. Now, there's the catch. Because your presentation most time to be timed, let's say you have 10 minutes, and you want to cover what you have, and you want to hit the nail on the head. So you have you have two choices actually. If it's a question you can answer in a GP, why not? But because of time, you could say, um, if you don't mind, can we meet after um, this lecture? Seeing that what you your question as important as it is, is not um, really going to be covered here at, 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 at this uh, moment. So it's best you don't take the time for what you have to attend to something that has been, according to you, is not related to what you're delivering at the moment. So you can, you can take that um, response offline, but do well to, if, if it's an important question, there are the key question that relates to a challenge that the person is facing, I mean, the best you can do is take it offline and then and, and proper solution. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, Patrick, I hope your question has been answered. Yes, he answered it, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that was, I have to say that was a really tactful answer. Thank you, Dr. Ike. Look, I think um, we have the question here. This will be our last question. Sometimes from New Scene Jonathan, sometimes when you're delivering an ALP, you get so much reactions and feedback, and one might get lost, get lost, gun, get lost, get trapped. At this point, what are you going to do when you still have to you still have important slides to cover? So I think he's talking about when you're losing track of time and you have a lot to cover, and people keep asking questions and you're you're getting reactions. What can you do? Okay. okay, I think this is where you need the help of um, the executive organizing that ALP. Of course, you, you, you're going to a school, let's say university, right? So at that point, you may want to detail someone to take those questions, right? Take those questions so you deliver your lecture. Now, the next thing you would do is if um, you have the luxury of time, why not? You can take the questions. But if you don't have the luxury of time, as you're taking the questions, take their details and try to give um, answers thereafter. That would be the best way to go because at the center of all you are doing is your ability to deliver the ALP, deliver it on time and to the best of your ability. So do not let um, the need to have, except you are, you're having um, 
an interactive session where that was what you planned for. If not, your point to be deliver the lecture, get as much feedback as you can, and then um, um, take care of them after you've done what you went there to do. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, um, Dr. Ike. The session was really an eye-opening one. I'm sure um, we already got lots of nuggets from it. And maybe if you don't mind, we'll need your slide, though, please. Um, you would Definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll send that. That's my problem. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. And um, um, please, team, let's go on the chat and just say him how much we love him and appreciate him for joining us this evening, despite his super busy schedule. And also, before we move on to the next speaker i just want to appreciate um the presence of our senior members that are on the call at the moment i have um, sd adebola bada Banges. thank you so much for ah, always senior man, I greet you, sir. <laughs> thank you so much sir for always supporting your yps we're grateful we also have um sir saeed olosho we are so so grateful for joining us this evening thank you so much for your time i'm sure you guys are having a good time too and like we are having us too all right, so you, I'll you hand. You bought this by CW today. You didn't tell me to, to even force to say good evening to them. <laughs> yeah, they, they came Don't, to support us too. Oh, yeah, Don't, please. <laughs> Don't put me in trouble. Aga Saeed, good evening, sir. Aga Bada, good evening, sir. As the bangers, please say something to yeah. us. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, um, I really enjoyed it, uh, uh, even though I didn't join from the beginning, but uh, uh, it's quite uh, interesting. First joint, we've really learned uh, one or two things uh, on this session, and it's quite a good one. Even myself, I've learned quite one or two things. So thanks very much, uh, Dr. Ike, for obliging us. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Always my pleasure. Thank you so much, sir. As the bank you want to say something to us? <laughs> yes, sir. You can unmute. Your hand is raised. I think you have the right to unmute. Um, Simeon, can you help Ogabada to unmute? Yes, he can. Okay. Oh, he said he can't. He can't unmute. Simeon, please unmute him, please. He's so we need to hear our baggage as this voice. <laughs> and then I see someone's hand raised too. Maybe after Ogabada has spoken, maybe you have a question or something. Oh, okay. I think it's you can unmute now, sir. Try to unmute. Okay, maybe issues with Zoom, but hopefully before before the end of our session, I'm sure um Ezzy will speak to us. But thank you so much, sir, for joining. Um, Money Man, do you have a question? I see your hand is raised. Okay, I think we can go ahead. Ella, you can please take over and um, call the next um, speaker. Okay, welcome, sir, to Engineer Bada. You're welcome. We're glad mm -hmm. to have you here. Okay, we're going to be um, welcoming our next speaker. I've introduced her earlier, Engineer Mrs. Docas Otiskuro. So she is a dogged ALP lecturer, and she's going to be sharing her experience with us, having given lots and lots of ALP lectures. So um, Mrs. Dockers, over to you. Let's, let's welcome her, let's welcome her. You know how we do it here, with the clapping emojis in the chat box, let us welcomely, let us receive her welcoming.
Hello, it's Madam Dr. Sonico. Yes, she is. Okay, okay. Let me stop sharing. Hello? We can hear you now. Okay, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Um, good evening, uh, senior members. I see everybody on the call. Uh, I'm already nervous now to speak because how do you talk in front of an ALP boss and even Sahid himself and so on and so forth? Anyways, I, I'm sure I'll try my best. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, everyone. So let me just go straight to sharing my slides so uh, we won't waste much of our time here. Okay, I hope you can all see my slide, right? Yes. Okay, all right, so... Um, as we all know, we're here for the Train the Trainer workshop, right? Uh, this particular presentation is going to be delivered by myself, um, Dr. Otis Kuro. And so why are we here? Why am I here myself? Like I said earlier, we're here for uh, Train the Trainer workshop, okay? How to deliver an effective ALP, all right? So what does train the trainer mean, yeah? Um, first thing you need to understand about train the trainer is you training other people. That means getting people ready, okay, to do the thing you're doing, right? And then secondly, also, it's a training section. So it's not just you coming to talk, but it is you training. That is preparing people, getting people ready to be able to do what you are teaching them. All right. And then also, last of all, it is you um, teaching them, like I said earlier, to be able to transfer this knowledge, to be able to train other people. All right. So it's a two way thing, or should I even say it's a three way thing? You, you train, um, you, you have a literal training. When I say train, not just talk, but literal training. Okay. And then also, you're preparing those persons you're training to be able to train others or to be able to deliver an effective um, work plan or whatever it is you're training them on, okay? So what are the requirements for um, to be able to do the, uh, train the trainer? Let's say if you are the trained, uh, if you're the one doing the training, now what are the requirements for you to have to be able to train others, okay? Um, every trainer needs to have two different um, set of skills that is very, very important, okay? And one of those skills is a content-related expertise, okay? What does that mean? That means know your subject. Don't ever leave, go to talk to people, to train people, to have a session or something you have no idea about. So that means if you're called upon for something, if you don't think you have the time to prepare for it, or you will not be able to gather the required knowledge and information you need, politely turn it down. Because one of the biggest skills you need to have is that you need to know that subject you're about to teach or you're about to train on. And then secondly, also, is the ability to transfer this knowledge to get your, your listeners to be able to understand. Because it is one thing to be able to, um, it is one thing to know something, it's another thing to be able to teach others to understand it, okay? Um, I have lecturers or teachers in school that taught me all through my time of education, even up to date. But there are those ones I can never forget. And I can wake up from sleep and still be able to do those their subject or those their courses. Why? Because they didn't just know that thing, but they were able to convey that knowledge they know um, you back to me, all right? So you need to know what you're doing and then you need to have the skill to be able to transfer that thing to the next person you're training, okay? So what are some of these um, other skills? So if you break down this skill, okay? 
first of all, training need analysis. Okay, you need to make analysis, you need to make findings, you need to be sure of what you're going to talk about. Okay. Um, it is normally done by industry experts, not really in this case, you won't really say industry, or people should just say experts, not experts as far years of experience but as part as as in knowing what you want to do okay and then it also needs learning and development so even you that is going to train people or those people you need their training they need to constantly be learning and developing okay and you to the same thing and then it needs assessments too you don't just train people or you don't just talk to people or you don't just encourage people to deliver ALP uh, without trying to find out, did they understand what I thought them, okay? The same thing you do that, is the tr that has been trained, the trainee, when you go to deliver this ALP to the student, you don't just, you shouldn't just go and talk and talk and talk and talk. You should be able to have a session where you find out, did I do well or did they get the message, okay? And then another thing is potentials, okay? What are you trying to achieve here or where, where are you going? Or um, is it going to be 100% potential or 50 or so? But of course, we should always aim for 100. And then of course, the results, you need to be able to make sure that whatever training you're having, whether as an ALP or you're training other people, results are coming out, okay? You're having results and positive results, okay? And then also evaluation. Um, sometimes give your listeners, whether, in the, um, whether the trainees, the people you're training or whether the students you're delivering ALP to, you should be able to um, have an evaluation session. That's why we have the ALP survey form or ALP feedback form. Share it for them to be able to give you their feedback. So to be able to tell you, oh, you did well, or you didn't do well, or I think you should do a little bit more in this area, okay? And then uh, next, my slide will be willing to move, okay. So um, one thing I always want us to understand about training orders or about training uh, the trainer section or workshop or you uh, going to deliver an ALP or so is that it's a train. The word train, like we know, we enter for transportation. A train can never, ever be one part. It's always parts and parts of cars or carriage or um, means of transportation all connected together. Even when you say a train of people, it can never be made up of one person, all right? It is always connected together. Yes, it always has the leader or the, um, the um, in person in front or the head, the machine or the engine house, the powerhouse. Like for we, we have the YP section and we have um, of real Gege as a YP chair. So she is chairing that, um, um, that ALP train. But then you can see that she has so many connections behind her. Today, she could have decided to just turn on her Zoom and start talking to herself. No, but she had Gerald to start the session. She had her co-YP chair to do the moderating. She has all the YPs coming to deliver lectures, you know, and all that. So it's a train. It has a connection of a teamwork and all that. And then how does this training take place or what, how does this train connect to each other? So the first phase, you're going to have the trainer training um, the trainee or training somebody or talking to students on an ALP or so, right? And then the second phase is the trainer stands back and watches their trainee put to action what they've taught them, okay? so. And then the third phase is going to be that person that was trained or that person that was talked to or that was enlightened about something goes and enlightens those um, that are under him or her or that have not heard this thing before, okay? And then that person stands back again and watches to see if what they told the third person, that person really understood it and would be able to replicate it and do the same thing back, okay? So you see, it's a connection, all right? And then also, um, what's the next thing? Why do we um, have a train the trainer section or why do we do um, train the trainer section or why would I myself want to be a trainer or to talk to a group of people or deliver an ALP. First of all, it is a powerful learning tool. The best way you can teach yourself, I tell people, is you teaching others. I don't know about others, but for me, um, I can wake 
you can wake me from a deep sleep and ask me practically almost any question about drilling fluid. And I should be able to, if I don't give you 100% answer, likely 80%. Why? Because I have been assisting Professor Wami to teach drilling fluid for the past um, eight years now or seven years. Okay. Um, natural gas, not so much. Maybe I'll say 70, 50 to 70%. I'll be able to give you answers to almost any question you offer me. But honestly, tell me to tell you something about uh, uh, Skowiski's equation for reservoir modeling and all that. My dear, I'm going to need to go read the book or do evaluation or something, you understand? So the best way you can train yourself, the most powerful training or learning method you can give yourself is you training others, is you speaking to others, is you teaching people what you know. Also, it's a win-win game for both the trainer and the trainee. Number one, the trainer gets to be reminded of that thing they know, they become expert at it. The, train, the trainee becomes informed. Okay, and so on. So it's a win-win thing. Nobody is losing here. Okay, and then also it helps you to build your skills as a person. You have basically three types of skills, or all your skills are divided into three. Okay, you have the transferable one. All right, the ones that are being told to you, or so you have the personal traits, the one you were born with, the one you came with, and then you have the knowledge base. Those ones you went to school for, or you went for a technical training section for certification and all that. So when you get involved in the train the trainer um, duty or being an AOP lecturer, my dear friend, you are building this whole three skills for yourself. Okay, and then. Also, you leave a life lasting impact and your name goes down in history. I mean, you will always be known. And um, there are some YPs that the minute they are being talked about, the first thing you hear people say, ah, the ALP Lord, or somebody like um, one or D, he's called Ambassador. Most people had me calling his real name, right? You hear people calling him ambassador. Where did you think that came from? It was because of how much he was involved or how much ALPs he delivered during his um, days of being a YP and an active YP. So you leave your name in history and you make an everlasting impact, okay? The first time I met Brian was me coming to deliver um, an ALP at his school, all right? And since then we became very good friends. It was easy for us to rapport with each other. I'm very sure tomorrow if I'm in trouble, um, if I need something I need to find, especially on something I thought Brian, I would want to go back to Brian and he'll be able to give it back to me. Okay, so I've made an impact, all right? And so many other um, reasons, okay? Excuse now, me, Madam Dockers. Sorry to interrupt, but I just want to remind you of the time. You have about three minutes more. Okay, all right. So one way you can be a trained a trainer or be involved in training trainer, like I said earlier, or like I keep kept on mentioning, is becoming an ALP lecturer. Okay. Another way is through energy for me programs, and another way is through volunteering. Okay. And like I mentioned earlier, there are several impacts and benefits you will get from being an ALP lecturer, for example. All right. Um, I just listed a few here that to me are applicable to me, um, using myself as an example and my experience okay it has gained it has given me um experience in presentation making a presentation to a large crowd is not a problem for me school resumes and usd gives me 250 students to teach i don't have a problem with it whether in loudness of my voice or in boldness they are all male some of them are even far older than me but it's not a problem to me why because i have been talking i've been doing presentations okay and then also it's you'll be able to gain some leadership skills while volunteering okay and then you gain visibility cannot be overemphasized visibility especially when you get involved in alp for sp all right and then also tangible if you notice i made the tangible, the tangible red and bolded it's tangible networking opportunity, not just networking opportunities where you have so many people's contact on your phone, so many cards, but you don't have a one-on-one -on -one report or rapport or relationship with these people. But when you go delivering ALPs and getting involved in volunteering services, energy for me, it gives you tangible networking opportunities. And I shared some pictures here of, um, of my of the impact or the positive and the benefits I have gained from being an ALP lecturer um, over the years of my membership in SPE. 
okay, and awards also, okay, and certifications and all that. And then above all, you get the opportunity to put your section's name down in history. This is SPE table of um, best ALP section award for several years now. As you can see there, Portacot is seeming to be repeated always. So if you're a YP here and you have not yet planned to get involved in the ALP um, business, my dear, you are very wrong because you are at the point you are on the team of making sure our name does not appear here again and it will not work we will ginger you we will give you the energy and you must join the team because we need to include the name for 2022 all right so thank you very much everybody for listening and i welcome some questions if you have any thank you Thank you very much, Madam Dockers. Amazing, amazing stuff. Remember, she said ALP is a win-win situation. You become an expert while teaching others. So to put in my own words, I would say you become an expert while raising other experts. Thank you very much. OK, so if you have any question for Madam Dockers, kindly put up your hands. And I would take your question. I think it's to be easier for us to like put our questions there in the chats because it's difficult for us to unmute. Okay, any question from Madam Dockers? I'm sure we have questions for her. Okay, Sunday. Sunday has a question. Sunday, if you cannot unmute. Kindly um, type your question in the chat and I'll read it out for her. Simeon, try to see if you can unmute him, please. Like, make him a call. Go ahead and unmute. Okay, thank you. Okay, Sunday, you can go ahead and unmute. Okay, thank you so much, Madam Dockers. Thank you for the presentation. My quick question is. Um, the ALP, is it part of the various volunteering group or ALP is a general, is a, is a general platform where every member of the YP is expected to participate? So is it expected for the whole house or is it a specific subsection of the subcommittee or volunteering group for the YP section? I didn't really get that I was registering. Okay. I hope my question is clear or... Right yeah, uh, I think it's clear. <laughs> Anyways, um, it's a general thing. ALP is open to every single YP member of SPE, even to senior members. It's just that it is more to YPs. Why? Because it is the beginning of their career. Okay, so it's a means of building them, developing them career-wise, and then developing them their skills and all that, okay? But it is open to all the YPs. Now, um, for Potaka section, one of our strategy, right? Because everybody cannot just be doing ALP, ALP, right? One of our strategy is that we have uh, an ALP committee. What is their task? Their task is to be the liaison officer between the schools and these YPs, okay? And then also to ensure that a YP that delivers ALP actually gets that ALP registered. All right, help with the topic, with the flyer. So just the organizing of the ALP generally and making sure we're keeping record. But the ALP delivery itself is open to every single YP. In fact, if you don't want to talk to university students, you want to talk to secondary school data, that's even up to you. All you just need to do is reach out to um, the YP mama, uh, the YP chairperson, and then she will reach out to the section. They can give you, they can even provide you a letter, application letter applying to the school. So you, you don't even really need to go there and start speaking plenty English or thinking of how you need to convince them. No, um, a letter is drafted. All you do is to just go and drop it in the school, get a contact person, to be um, giving you information and a schedule date if you didn't put a schedule date on the on the application form already. But anyways, the point is it is open to every single YP. If you're on the Telegram group, um, Ofure always puts it there. You know, once there's an ALP up, Ofure and Iwawari, 
they post it on the Telegram group, seeking for volunteers to be willing to volunteer for ALP. So yeah, it's open to every single YP of SPE. Okay, any more question? <laughs> okay, I guess Sunday has his um, answer already. Uh, Madam Dockers, we have one of your students here, Newton, he's saying he has benefited from your drilling fluid lecturing. Maybe you could give him a shout out. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, do I have anybody with a question? All right, I think that's it for the question and answer session. We're going to move over to our next speaker. Thank you very much, Madam Dockers, for sharing your knowledge with us. Um, I believe everyone here is gingered to volunteer and to be part of ALP sessions in the future. Yes. Okay, quickly, I would um, welcome our next speaker. I know you have been hearing about ALPs, ALPs, ALPs. So our next speaker would just help us package, tell us how to package and ar arrange ourselves for ALP lectures. So she's going to be telling us how to um, prepare your slide pack for ALPs. And that is no other person than Ibu Wari. She is currently the ALP committee chair lead. So you know how we do it here with the clapping emoji in the um, chats. Let's warmly welcome Ibu Wari. Hello, Ibu Wari. Can I hand over to okay. you now? Yes, thank you, Manuela. Please confirm you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Okay, so maybe you could stop sharing so I can share my slide. Manuela, please, can you see my slide? Yes, I can. Yes, I can see your okay. slide. Okay, thank you. Okay, good evening, everyone, and special recognition for our senior members on the call. So basically, my my job this night is not much. I'm not going to deliver a lecture like the other speakers. So I just want to um, take us through what is expected of us when we're delivering our ALPs, especially using the slide pack, and then how you can also, you know, take permission from your place of work so that you know, that will not be an issue. At least if you're taking permission from your boss, he knows where you're going to. And then there's a provision by SPI as to that effect. So all us, my name is EY Christopher. I work for Hairs Holdings and I'm the student affairs co-chair for this board year and the ALP committee team lead. So I'll just do like a quick wrap of what the both speakers have talked about, but I'm really focusing on my ALP delivery. So the ALP is basically for young professionals. And according to SPI um, standard, your presentation has to be about 45 minutes long, inclusive of 15 minutes for your Q&A. And your audience are basically students. So the ALP is targeted to secondary school and university students. And then your presentation topic should cover, you know, getting the student excited about being part of the energy industry, showing them a glimpse of what opportunities are there for them if they decide to take this path to join our prestigious industry. And you being an SP member, how have you benefited? And then you can basically share knowledge on all that topics that speaks to their growth and development. Now, like the ALP, the next mega ALP, which speaks to presentations and effective presentations and elevator speeches. So it mustn't really be, uh, we'll be talking about ALP, ALP. So I just want to make it clear that it mustn't really be about petroleum or the oil and gas industry. You could also speak to soft cues that we impact because the major goal of the ALP is to impact the students. And while impacting the students, also, you know, write the name of the section up right there and, and we back that word. So, like, uh, Doc has mentioned, we've gotten the award for last year and we're making sure that we get the award. Not just the award, we're not saying that we're focused on the award, but we're going to impact life and what we're impacting life too, we're going to you know, get reward for it. So uh, I'll be talking basically on the ALP slide template. So when you want to deliver your ALP, SPI has already helped us to put together a slide pack for us to use. And this slide pack, I saw asked that question, asked Dr. Ag that question. Even though the slide pack is necessary for you to use, you can add your own slides, you can delete slides that are not necessary, you can change you know, the order of slides, you can change wordings on the slide, 
just to suit your presentation. So it doesn't mean that you have to stick to exactly what is here. There is room for, you know, uh, modifications as it suits your topic. Because this slide, if you look at it, is basically mainly about sharing your experience as a person, uh, as a member, and also your, your job in the industry. But while you're speaking to other specific topics, you can easily make provision to add it by deleting slides that are not necessary and adding that which you feel is necessary. So let me just take you through this slide. So this is the first slide. Basically showing, you know, the SP logo and all that. When you come to the second slide here, you can edit, you put your name there, the company you work for, just like I, uh, Dr. Ike used this uh, this slide. So you could see why some of the things in the slide are here. So your the name of your the name of your company and your position, you put your SP role there, and the section you're affiliated to in this case, which is section 103. Then you go to introducing yourself. So you could use this template. You tell us your background, where you come from, your university, where you studied, and then your past and current job and any other thing interesting about you, you might want to share with the students. Then for that, this is still you talking about yourself and the energy industry. So if you feel that you don't have anything to say here, you could easily delete this slide as it's not so necessary. Same thing with this. So this is just speaking to what you do in the industry. Like I said, you can amend the details and which other, any of them that do not speak to you or speak to the purpose while you're delivering that ALP, you can easily take it out. So the same thing with this. So after that, you could uh, put in, you want to describe where you're going to your career journey, like your professional goals and aspirations. You can put it here, but if it's not necessary for you to do, which is not compulsory, you take it out. Now, the, the main thing that this slide captures is basically the you know, trends in the energy industry and you know facts and figures, which like I said, if it's not necessary, you take out. But they are useful information. And in the, in the case where you're basically sharing your experience and your experience in the energy industry, your experience with SP, how SP has impacted you, then this slide will be like your go-to. So it, it is important to use the slide and then you can just modify it to even save you the time of editing, you know, decorating your slide, trying to make it beautiful and all that. So I'll just take you through it. Uh, um, as fast as possible, as I do not have much time. Then you could talk about challenges in the energy industry. It's already here for you. So you can just take your time to explain it to the students, why you do what you do, why we do what we do as energy professionals. Uh, current trends in the industry, you could see the word energy consumption, 1993 or 2018. So in this case, if you feel this slide is necessary, you can easily edit it and then bring it up to speed as 2022, where we are right now. Same thing as for this slide. And then like, the trends in the energy industry, this continues. Uh, what opportunities lies there? So sometimes based on the topic you're talking about, this might be really necessary for you because the students want to know what are those rules out there in the energy, the oil and gas industry, that when they finish school, where they can, what, what parts, what career paths can they look into? So you could talk to, speak to this slide speaks to it. And then working in the industry, what are the pay, you know? People like money, they want to know what the compensation is. We get that question a lot from students. <laughs> Okay, so this is basically talking about demographics. If you want to speak to, especially this slide is mainly important, especially when you want to speak to when there is no membership talk for that particular year, people. We try as much as possible to put the membership talk together with it. Okay, this could be a summary of uh, your journey, where you want your others to know how they can prepare for their career in the energy industry and what have you. Now, what is SP's role in the industry? Why should they be part of it and all that? So this speaks to membership, how many professional members we have statistics. So like I said, it might not really be necessary for you if you're not focusing on membership, then the person doing the membership talk can, can you know, make use of this important information on the slide and all that. So that's it. How has SP helped you to grow? You could also use this template, uh, uh, your local and international participation, how it has made you visible, just like Madame Doc has spoke to, you know, your networking, how it has helped you mentoring and all that. Okay, so this is like the end of the slide. This is your last slide where you can show members our website, where they can go to learn, and our direct emails. Okay, so I will just go to the next thing, which is uh, taking permission from your place of work to deliver an ALP lecture. So by the way, I've Put these two templates on the group chat on the chat box. We have the ARP slide template there, and also this letter is also there. So I put it as a Word document and as PowerPoint. Sorry. Yeah, I just quickly want to remind you of the time. You have about two minutes to wrap up. 
Okay, no problem. So this this letter is what you can use to take permission from a place of work. Oh, I'm going for you, you. I'm going for an ALP lecture. This is what it's about. You could use it to obtain permission at your place of work by simply editing this letter and sending it to your supervisor. So thank you very much. But before I wrap up, I want to point out something. So for the a uh, ALP committee. We'll be needing your support. So we expect that after this training, we know that a lot of people have been equipped. They now have a better understanding of what ALP is about. So we want to get as many volunteers as possible. As we put out those, uh, those uh, ad, um, notifications on our various platforms, asking for volunteers, we believe that you're well equipped after this training. And we would like to get lots of volunteers, please. We don't want to see the usual faces. We want every YP to participate. And as you participate, please, you send off your picture, your name, your affiliation, your profile, your SP number, your email address, because in as much as delivering this ALP is important, it is also very important for us to keep a track of the ALPs we are delivering. Our recording is key. So after delivering your ALPs, please don't forget to uh, send, don't forget to send us those details so that after you have delivered your ALPs, you can also log it on the SPI website. Thank you very much. Thank you. So if there are questions. Yeah. If you have questions for you, Wari, you know how we do it. Please kindly raise your hands and we would unmute you to ask your questions. Okay, I believe everyone understood what um, you talked about in Wari, it was really detailed and explanatory. So that being said, we're going to be moving forward to our next speaker, which is Obian Uju. So in every ALP, we usually have the membership talk. So Obian Uju will be guiding us through the membership talk. Would you are you on the call? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes, Ella, I am. I am. Okay. Over to you, Jim. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. senior members on the call. Um, I think our speakers have done justice to the purpose of this gathering so far. Everyone. that I've spoken so far have said to be said. So um, I'll just be saying a few things, mostly uh, reiterating on what most of them have said and as it concerns membership drive. So um, Ella, next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so for those of us that don't know my name, I'm Obian Julie Sicheli. I'm a field engineer with Baker Hughes. I'm also the YPWLP team lead for the tackled session. So that's a brief introduction about me. And I used to be the membership team lead. And I'm so happy that Ella is the one taking over now. And I'm sure she's going to do a great job with that. So uh, next slide, please. Thank you. So um, this is the only slide I'm going to be talking about today because this is going to incorporate everything that needs to be said about the membership drive. Um, a lot of us have, would be wondering why drive is added to membership. Why is the membership drive? Why are we driving membership? So basically the word drive is a force that is driven by passion. For most of us as members of SPE, it's because of probably we're working in the oil and gas industry and that's why we're here. But for some of us, it's more than that. It has to do with volunteerism. Um, there's something that um, YP Mama, um, Dr. Cass used to see. And she said it right from when I started being active in SPE and that's, it's, it has just been with me, it has been in my head all through that Volunteers don't have the time, they have the heart. And when you have the heart, you're driven by passion. So then when you're talking to somebody about something that you're passionate about, that is a drive. So hence, membership drive. Whoever is going to be taking membership drive, when you 
find yourself in a position, be it in the office, uh, in church, in school, wherever you find yourself and you're prompted to talk about SP, you have to talk about it with passion. Like, this is something I'm passionate about. I've been there. I know what benefits I've gained from it. So hence membership drive. And I'm sure most of us are driven by uh, passion for SP and that's why we're here. Um, firstly, if you're going to be taking a membership drive, you should know what SP is about because you can't just come to a place and assume that everybody understands what SP is. Um, this actually um, occurred to me when I did the membership drive with two NYC students last year, and most of them studied other courses and they've never heard about SP. And you cannot just in that graduate start saying, um, join SP, join SP, this is what SP will do for you. No, you have to let them know and help them understand what SP is all about. That it's the Society of Petroleum Engineers, and this is what they do. And these are the kind of people that are members of SP, that we have people from different uh, backgrounds and um, people from different disciplines are members of SP. So um, this is what SP is all about. So you need to help them understand what SP is. And secondly, because there's no time, I'm really going to wrap this up uh, probably in less than uh, three minutes or so. So secondly, you have to be able to communicate your values and benefits. And that's one of the things that I like to talk about when I'm in, when I'm in a position to talk to people about SP in my office, anywhere I find myself. I tell you about the benefits because the benefit is personal to me. It's something that I've seen. It's something that I've witnessed and I've experienced. So it's something I want to go with. It's like, okay, this is what SP has done for me. And I saw that you already um, put up a slide. Um, I think I have the slide somewhere in this slide back, or I don't know if Ella can be quick enough to go to the web that actually uh, talks about the benefits of SP. It's down, down, way down. So it talks about the benefits of SP. Yes, this is it. Um, why are you an SP member? How has SP helped you grow? So I can actually relate to all of these benefits. And that's why I can easily tell people. So it's important that you, you clearly and effectively communicate the values of SP to your intended target. Probably it's your stu it's stu their students, their professionals or young professionals. You need to let them know why they should be SP members. Speak on the what's in what's in it for me. Like that's what most people want to know. What's what am I to gain being an SP member? So speak to that and let them understand that. And uh, sincerely, since SP is a well-established organization with strong values and member benefits, so communicating all these benefits should not be so hard. Um, and to help with this process, try asking existing members why they joined SP. Probably in your in your membership drive, um, if there are other members there that have been SP members, you try asking them why they joined SP and what SP has done to them. So others can actually hear from from them as to why they why they should join SP. So Ella, please back to my previous slide. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So um, lastly, communicate the membership registration process. So you don't want to leave them hanging. You don't want to just uh, put the, the sweet benefits in their mouth and just leave them like that. You want to also help them get registered, right? So you want to break down the process, um, how they get to the website. And also tell them that it's they have, um, for students, tell them it's a free, uh, membership. It's a free, um, Chevron has actually covered that. So let them know that so that they don't just wave it away. And for young professionals, give them the option like fee waivers. And for professionals that can pay, tell them how to pay and how to get to the website and just break down the membership process to them so they understand. And then also follow up to make sure that they've actually uh, registered for those that reach out to you and say, okay, I want to register. Um, follow up with them and make sure they're actually registered, okay? So um, also while we're trying to change lives and through SP cares, uh, do a lot of charity work, we're also counting the numbers. So, um, following up on the registration process is part of the way to ensure that the numbers are intact. So um, that's one um, the, the ways that you can actually drive um, membership. And um, probably an idea for 
anybody that will be taking membership drive, probably through, during your membership drive or in your slide, you could play a video, get a member, get a senior member to give, to give a video testimonial of uh, the benefits of being an SPE member and what SPE has done for him or her and play that video. And that video would actually say a lot more than anything you have to say. So um, this is when I, my presentation comes to an end. Thank you for listening and I hope you have a great evening. Thank you very much, Uju. Thank you very much. Okay, um, we have come to the end of the presentations for today's meeting. I hope we have been enjoying ourselves thus far. Sorry, Next Ella. Time. Yeah? Sorry, sorry to cut you short. Sorry, I saw a question on the chat box okay. for me. Yeah, so the question is saying, is the main purpose of AOP for membership drive? So the answer is no. The main purpose of AOP is not for membership drive, but membership drive is like part of it. So in as much as we're looking for new members to join SP, if we are trying to add value to our student members, we are trying to see, help them see what the energy industry is about, help them prepare for the workplace, help them to gather skills that will be useful to them for them to succeed in the energy industry. But while we are doing that, because of the good work we're doing and what, because we want to impact more upcoming engineers and the next generation of energy professionals, we also need to you know, attract more people, encourage more people to join, to benefit from the good work we're doing. So that's why we are always doing energy, uh, sorry, membership drive, because every member of SP always has something to benefit. Now, we don't want to be the only ones to have that you know, that advantage. You want other people to come in and benefit what we are also benefiting. Thank you. Thank you, Wari. Thank you. Just to add to what she said, we've been hearing it since the beginning of this meeting. ALP is mostly about impact and giving back. So, um, like I said, that's it for the presentation. You have been an amazing audience with the fireside chats and um, the questions you've been answering, very interactive. I'm going to hand over to the ALP committee lead now. Thank you for having me. I wish you a wonderful evening ahead. Okay, um, thank you very much, Manuela, for that excellent delivery. And thank you to everyone who spoke today, uh, Dr. Ike. Uh, Uwari, and of course, Madam Dokas, uh, excellent points have uh, been shared, and I'm sure um, a lot of us have um, learned a few, not a thing or two um, from, from this um, session. Even uh, our senior members are also uh, making those comments. I, I, I see uh, 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 Ogabada mentioned uh, having learned uh, a few points as well from this. So um, I, I'm sure we all enjoyed it. Um, thank you to all the speakers. So quickly, I'll just give um, the announcements. So we just have uh, uh, two announcements, which are uh, ALPs, uh, which we have uh, coming up. Um, we have um, um, an ALP, which we scheduled for the, uh, for the 13th of September. Um, that ALP would be on communicating effectively, presentations and elevator pitches coming up on the 13th of September, sorry. Uh, and so uh, for all of you who are enthusiastic about joining uh, ALP delivery and uh, participating in ALPs, uh, this is um, a chance for you to do that. So as um, you already said earlier, uh, if you're interested, please uh, let us know and reach out to us and uh, we'll be glad to have you uh, be a part of, of the team and of course, uh, delivering even more and more LPs for the section. We also have another LP uh, for the 24th of September um, that will be on energy sustainability, the role of potential energy engineers. So um, these are the topics for these two LPs. They are actually LPs for um, the university student chapters, uh, 13 of them. So um, that will be the audience you'll be having. So of course, if you have an experience or you, you like um, Madame Doc has treated, of course, giving an LP requires you to have um, significant thoughts to share on those topics. So if you think you have those and you'd like to be a part of it, uh, please reach out to um, any of us in the team. Uh, you can reach out to Laura, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to 
um, a wife and mama, uh, hopefully you can reach out to Ella uh, and we'll be happy to, to um, appear for you and also include you in the planning. So we also have um, a distinguished lecturer program uh, coming up that will be held on the 15th of September. Um, and that will be taken by Elizabeth Coffey, who is a consultant uh, with the Spark Leadership Limited. So uh, the Distinguished uh, Lecture Program is actually organized every year, uh, where SP um, sends out uh, very experienced professionals across um, several sections around the globe to share their knowledge on um, specific topics. And of course, there's usually a lot of um, knowledge that has been dished out from these very experienced professionals. So I believe it's not one you want to miss, it's the physical event, uh, which will be held at Spain, Greece. Um, yeah, I'm sure a lot of us are familiar with that location, uh, in Peter of Europe, and that will be at 5.30 p.m. Now we also have a YP hangout um, that we have, of course, planned for you. That will be held with uh, the section director. So, uh, of course, uh, all work and okay makes uh, Jack a dull boy, as we would say. Uh, so, it will be a good time to unwind, uh, to relax, and of course, get to know um, some of your um, other um, uh, colleagues uh, and um, fellow YP members. Of course, uh, a lot of us have not actually seen each other before. Maybe we just always have. Um, online sessions or virtual sessions as this. So this would be a good time to come um, and hang out with um, your fellow YPs as well as with our section director. That will be held on the 17th of September, 2022. Uh, time is 5 p.m. And venue is um, Boomtown Restaurant and Coffee Shop. That's uh, New GRE Port Harcourt. Uh, so we expect that you'll be joining us for uh, these two wonderful events, and uh, we hope to see you there. So on um, uh, that note, uh, I'd like to hand over to um, uh, to Madam Ofri to give us a uh, vote of thanks for uh, this session. Over to you, Madam Ofri, please go ahead. Thanks so much, Gerald. Good evening, uh, everyone. Hey, if you're not muted, kindly go on mute. <laughs> yeah, good evening, everyone. Wow, what a session it has been. I don't know about you, but for me, it's been super packed. I've actually gotten lots of nuggets from the different speakers, starting from our keynote speaker, Dr. Ike, um, who took us through what um, a typical AAP session should look like, and also even sharing his own experience and pictures and everything with us, how AAP is all about educating, informing, and also developing um, skills, um, the skills for the next generation of oil and gas professionals. Super, super amazing session. You also had to talk about how, why he's doing what he's doing is because of impact and legacies. It's all about lasting impact and legacy. What would you be remembered for? Um, Doc has made a scenario of Wonodi, and what people know him for, an ambassador. Um, you giving AOP um, lectures to students and university, um, university students and even secondary school students makes you an ambassador. So that's what the name is about, ambassador lecturer program. You're an ambassador, you're also a lecturer. So thanks so much, Dr. Ike, for sharing your experience with us. Lots of amazing tips on how we, um, um, how, why we need to give, um, AOPs, thank you so much. And the next was our own YP Mama. Thank you so much, um, Docas, for always being there for us. Um, thanks for sharing your experience and thanks for leading us through that illustration you gave about the train and how we all need to work together to achieve this. Um, really, really, really grateful for that. So indeed, um, um, like um, um, she reiterated, it's not just for the AOP committee alone, it's for every member every YP member of Port Harcourt section, we are, as far as you're a young professional member, you should be giving ALPs to university students and also secondary school. Thanks so much for your support always. And also our own energetic um, ALP committee lead. Thanks for all you do. Thanks for putting this amazing program together, you and your fantastic team. Um, I'm sure everyone that joined this call today um, was able to garner lots of um, nuggets from everything that you said. And just to reiterate, if you know you want to give AOP and you just want to seek permission for your for your boss, 
um, SPI has a letter for us. They've already drafted a letter. It's just for you to edit it, put your details and send it to your boss to say, sir, I will be giving an ALP lecture from maybe 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. today. Um, kindly grant me permission to go um, impact life, to go share my industry experience with students. And uh, I don't know which boss would want to reject that kind of thing. So please, let's also leverage of, on that. Um, Iwowari has already shared that letter with us. Um, reach out to her if maybe you don't have it yet. And then get download it and then use it. Anytime you want to um, deliver AOP lectures, please send it to your boss and get the permission so that when you're giving the lectures, you know you're fully involved and you want to give it your best. And of course, all the speakers mentioned preparation, preparation is key. That can be overemphasized. You want to give stuff and um, give it your best. So you need to prepare. And also for our last speaker, Uju, thanks so much there um, for sharing um, a typical membership drive session. So we do membership drives during AOPs because there might be people joining us for the first time that, that are not members of SP. It's an opportunity for them to know about our fantastic organization and also for them to join us. We are excited. We are reaping the benefits from being members of this great organization. So why don't we allow people to come join us and enjoy this um, super amazing benefit? Thanks so much, Uju, for sharing that. And overall, for me, it's been an amazing session and um, it will be great now for us to at least turn on our cameras, those that are still on the call, if you sure had a good time. I see Money Man is already doing that. Um, just before we say the closing prayers, it will be great to have pictures. So you can please turn on your camera. Let's um, smile, give, give the best smile, say cheese, and let's just at least have a picture to remember um, this amazing, amazing, amazing session. All right. Oh, Dr. Ike, you'll see here. Thanks so much. Thank you. We appreciate. Okay. I see Chochi. Let's get it, boy. Good to see you. Emmanuel, well done. Ekene, I see you too. Then Simeon, please just help us take a picture. I see my own amazing co-chair, the best moderator ever. Thanks so much for moderating this session with ease. Um, we, we sure kept the time. And uh, well done, well done. Ah, Gerard, star boy, I see you. Thanks so much, guys. Simeon, please let me know if you've taken a um, photograph. Okay, Iwari, once again, thank you. I see Jeremiah, thanks. I see Sunday, thank you. Emmanuel, Adair, Big Bay, thank money you. Money man, share some money, please. <laughs> Oh, money man. Who's the money man here now? Let the money flow. <laughs> oh, yes, is that your name, eh? <laughs> that your name, eh? Should we come closer? Let's come and tap. <laughs> okay, I'm sure we must have gotten yeah. pictures. Yeah, yeah, we are good. Oh, great. Nicholas, I see you. New team, I see you. YP Mama Dockers, thank you so much. Israel, Kennedy, wow, thanks for joining us. And Sasahi, thanks for joining and also still staying till this time. We are super grateful. Okay. okay. Now we need a volunteer to pray for us. Dr. Alec, thank you. Take care. Yeah. Yes, yes. Bye. Okay. So we need someone to just please say the prayer. Awesome. Please, let's go ahead. Kings of love, thank you for the successful outcome of this meeting. I thank you for all the speakers. Thank you for all those present. Father, I will commit everyone here as we're going. We will go safely. Those in routes, those in traffic, everybody get home safely. And also, um, we empower everybody, all those um, official LP speakers, you touch your ass, those that are scared, give them strength and grace to be able to deliver effective LPs in the future. And also, so at the end, we all achieve the aim of uh, making SPE session 103 the greatest SP session in the world. And then thank you for our life for preserving us to see another day. Thank you for our families, friends, and relations. And as we go, you go with us. These are many more we ask from you to Christ our Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Thanks so much, Pastor Churchill. <laughs> well done, guys. We still have 21 persons on the call. Thank you. So we'll be having, um, like Gerard announced, the DLP will be happening next week, Thursday. Then our own YP Hangout. Please, let's come and connect. Let's come network. One of our section directors will be around. It will be, it will be there to take questions as we connect and we chill. It's going to be a Saturday weekend. Let's come and chill, relax, and have fun, fun, fun. It's going to be fun. The social committee is already planning 
a wonderful event so please feel free to come around it's going to be on the 24th please we, we want to move it to like the 24th of sept 